Hey, good evening, Facebook Live family. It is Calvina Banner here, your inspirational speaker and teacher. Today is Friday and it's October 18th and it's about 8.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for joining me this Friday night if you're catching me live. I know it's Friday night, just got paid. Everybody trying to relax, chill, do what they need to do. Um, but I appreciate you taking a moment, just a moment's time with me this evening. So with that being said, I better hit it and quit it while I have your attention. But before I get started, I always want to urge all of us, please share the message. Share the message. Let people know that it's going down live right now here on Facebook Live at my page. So um, go ahead and share it. Uh, go ahead and uh, what else can you do? You can do the little watch parties, all those great, wonderful, technological, exciting things. Do all that. Do all those things. Let people know that it's happening live right now. Um, because again, I'm going to hit it and quit. I'm going to be in and I'm going to be out. Uh, but if you happen to be watching by replay, please, I thank you as well. But share the message too, because someone else could be blessed by the message just as you are, I pray, right? <laughs> I hope so. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. But go again, share the message. You got all that. Again, it's Calvina here, and I'm here just for a quick minute, your inspirational speaker and teacher. I want to set us up for a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Happy weekend, TGIF. So I want to set us up for a good, good weekend. So in the title you hear or you saw, you read, or maybe you might even have missed it, but the title of this short exhortation is You Better Recognize. You better recognize. Yeah, what am I talking about recognizing? Who am I talking about recognizing? So I was inspired. I was inspired. I talked to, to one of my sisters, um, Ebony. Hey, Eb, hey, if you happen to be watching, you know, this was inspired by you. So thank you. Uh, inspired by her uh, because I, I noticed in conversation when I talked to her, and we're talking about something or we're talking in conversation about ourselves, things that are happening in life. And um, in particular, when something is something bad happens or or we have a bad thought about something or we are tempted to behave in a not so godly manner. She always she always says, that's the devil. That's the devil. And I'm like, one, more, one day I was like, that's an aha moment for me. That's an aha moment for me, because a lot of times I think and I, I believe that a lot of us, even those of us who have been in the word for a very long time, a lot of us who are mature Christians, sometimes we allow random thoughts, random actions to come into our lives, yet we don't quite recognize the source of the thing. And I think it's very important that we do that. I think it's very important that we recognize the source of a negative thought, the source of a negative action, the source of a negative feeling. That doesn't come from God. It does not. Let's just be clear on that. It does not come from God. But like my sister said, that's the devil. <laughs> that's the devil. And when we're able to recognize, when we're able to recognize the source of the negative thoughts, feelings, and, and actions, and call it out as it is, we are able to respond in an effective manner. We don't have to allow Satan, the devil, the enemy to run rampant through our minds, through our lives, through our actions. We can actually recognize that and do something about it more effectively. Hey, did you know? Did you know? That we do have an adversary whose purpose is strictly only to kill, <laughs> to steal, and to destroy. And who is that? That is the devil. That is the devil. That is Satan himself. He is after us to kill, to steal, and to destroy us. That's what John 10.10 10 tells us. But I love the caboose of that scripture because it just doesn't stop there. Yes, we have an adversary. Yes, we have an enemy. But Jesus came. Jesus came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. So that and through Jesus is how we conquer, how we respond effectively when we are hit with negativity, whether it be in our minds, through our actions or through our feelings or even an outright attack upon us. And I'll get into that a little bit. So also, I like what scripture says in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 8. It says this, be sober, be vigilant, 
because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. Let me read it one more time. Be sober. All right, so that means have your mind right. <laughs> be vigilant. That means be watching. Be, be on alert about this thing. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And let me tell you, we're easy prey. We're, easy to, we're easier to devour if we don't recognize him. So this is why the Lord is telling us in the scripture, 1 Peter 5 and 8, that we got to be sober minded and we have to be vigilant. We have to be on the watch for this thing because the enemy is sneaky. He's sneaky. So although he walks about like a roaring lion, he's very sneaky about that thing. So he'll slide up in a way that you don't even recognize. You're like, oh my goodness, now nah, I done snapped off on somebody or, or I done came out of character because we weren't watching. We weren't vigilant. We weren't sober minded. And we weren't recognizing the source of all of those things. So it's important that we're sober minded and that we are vigilant, that we are watching because he's slick with his. He's very slick with his. So as I was stating, you know, he can rear his head through our thoughts. That's a big one through, through our thoughts. He can rear his ugly head through our thoughts. Now, once he can get control of our thoughts and have that thing, have our thoughts spiraling down. Yeah, he can, our actions will soon follow. So we have to be mindful of what we allow to be processed in our minds. So we don't have to dwell on, we don't have to meditate on every thought that enters our mind. If it's a negative one, prayerfully, if it's the word of God, you do, you meditate on it. But on the flip side of that, when the enemy drops a negative thought in your head, we ain't got to sit there and entertain it for days. We ain't even got to entertain it for a moment. Once we recognize, that's what we're talking about here. Once we recognize, okay, I got this thought that I want to punch that girl in the face. Oh, that's the devil. That's the devil. Lord, uh -uh, you tell me to love my enemies. You tell me to pray for those who spitefully misuse me. Yeah. So that's what we do. We counter it. We counter what the enemy means for harm. We counter it with good which is how Jesus designed it. Remember, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, not to succumb to, to being stolen from, not to succumb to being killed or destroyed. Yeah, we have to recognize the source, recognize the source of, of the negativity. So not only does the enemy rear his ugly head through our thought processes, the things we think, you know, he has a, he has a slick way to, <laughs> to show up in people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does. Can I get a witness? Yeah. The likes in the hearts. I appreciate it. Yeah. He has, <laughs> he has a very slick way of showing up through people, man, people we love, people we don't love, <laughs> people we care about, people we don't care about. He has a way of showing up. Yes, he does. So anybody had issue with their boss, perhaps? Mm-hmm. Yep. Did you ever consider the enemy is using that woman or that man to get to me? Have you ever considered that? But see, most times we look at it at face value. We like, man, look, if he tell me, if he come over here and tell me to stay overtime one more again, it's going to be me and him. Yeah, I, I don't want no smoke, but it's going to be some. You know, we take it at face value and we are ready to snap off on the person instead of saying, yep, yeah, I see this. Yeah, uh -huh. Enemy, you ain't slick. You using this person to get to me, but not today, Satan. Yeah. Like those mantras we see on the t-shirts here around here lately. Not today, Satan. We have to recognize, we have to recognize our enemy so that we know how to respond so, the, so that we don't succumb to foolishness. So we don't succumb to sinning. Yeah, we got to be mindful of that. So not only does he show up through our bosses, people we work with, you know, family. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Y'all know he can show up through some, our family. Can he not? Yes, he can. But we got to be able to recognize when he's, he's influencing our children or he's influencing our brother or our sister, influencing our, our husbands and our wives. Yeah, we ain't got to stand for that thing. 
You know what? Something, you know, your, your spouse come talking to you flip. You like, ah, not today, Satan. I mean, you don't do that in their face because then y'all, y'all probably been in the might, you know, in a strong argument, but just, okay, I, I see this. I know what this is about, right? So then you can address it a little bit differently. So be mindful, be mindful and don't let the enemy take you out of your character, out of your character. I remember a story I was, um, sharing, uh, somebody, I, you know, a friend of mine, somebody I know, and Basically, what ended up happening was they were upset because of a situation where their friend didn't respond the way they thought that they should in a certain situation. And so my friend that I'm talking to said, well, next time I'm going to do this. Next time I'm going to do that, which was totally out of that person's character. And, you know, it's like, no, you don't want to allow the enemy working through someone else to change who you are. Yeah. So don't allow the enemy to do that. Stay true to your character. Stay true to your character. So again, this is so important. Y'all recognizing, recognizing the play of the enemy, because if we don't, excuse me, if we don't recognize he'll, he'll have straight dominion over our own lives. If we, he'll, he'll just do what he will do what he wants with us. If we don't recognize him for who he is and respond and address him quickly, quick, fast, and in a hurry up. So what do we do? What do we do once we recognize, okay, this ain't nothing but the enemy. <laughs> this ain't nothing but the enemy. We need to suit up. We need to be geared up daily, putting on that whole armor, which the scripture talks about in Ephesians 6 um, and verses 10 through 18. It talks about that whole armor of God, but also within the scripture, this passage of scripture, it talks about basically what I am sharing today, which is that our fight, our fight are not, it's not against people. <laughs> um, it's against the enemy. And I'm going to read that portion of the scripture real quick. Again, this is in Ephesians chapter six, and it is verse, um, actually, I'm just going to start at verse 10. So Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That's key. We got to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So whenever we find ourselves under an attack from the enemy, we in and of ourselves, we ain't strong. Nah, nah, let's not, get, let's not get it twisted. We are not strong. So we have to make sure that we are fighting in the power of God. And this is how we do it. So we're going to put on the full armor. This is in verse 11. We're going to pull up, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Isn't this what we're talking about tonight? So the, the, the devil, he's very wily. He's very strate strategic in how he gets to us. But again, it, it, it takes the power of God for us to recognize it and to be able to fight it effectively. So verse 12, here we go. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Ah, y'all catch that? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And then it repeats it again in verse 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Yeah, that's that good stuff right there. So again, the struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against my sister. It's not against my brother. It's not against my boss. It's not against my pastor. It's not against my friends. It's the struggle is against the enemy working the situation. <laughs> yeah, his influence, scheming, working through the situation. But we have to be able to recognize that immediately. And when we do, we're able to fight in the power of God. We're able to rebuke the enemy through the name of Jesus Christ. Uh-uh, we're going to cut this right here. No, nope, we ain't playing. We just going to go ahead and cut this off right here, right now. So that's the idea, being able to recognize. Yeah, you better recognize. And then the rest of, the rest of the scripture goes on to talk about the different pieces of the armor. And I'm not going to go into all of those. It's the weekend. So I expect you to study 
on the weekend. I'm just kidding. Anyway, but the point is, yes, we got to suit up. We got to put on the whole armor of God in order to be successful against the scheming and the wiles and the tricks of the enemy because they will come. They will come. Just as sure as you're born and just as sure as you turn this Facebook Live off, <laughs> the enemy, he is going to try it. He is going to try it. And what are we going to do now? We need to recognize quickly, recognize quickly his foolishness. Uh-huh. And then address it accordingly. You know, as I was studying for this, um, for this exhortation, it, it made me think about, you know, we got to be well equipped for the fights that we're in. You know, we got to be well equipped for the fights that we are in. Why would I show up to a gunfight? Yeah. Why would I show up to a gunfight with a knife? No, I'm going to have appropriate, <laughs> appropriate uh, 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 artillery to meet the fight. And it reminded me of, if any of y'all seen Harlem Nights, that one scene, or just, yeah, before y'all got saved, yep. Uh, when you <laughs> seen Harlem Nights, that one scene where Arsenio Hall and his boys was uh, shooting their guns at Eddie Murphy on the other side of the wall. And uh, Arsenio and them, they had, Arsenio and his other guy, they had the machine guns. They, and then every time after they got finished shooting, the one guy would be like, pop, pop. And Arsenio couldn't take it no more. He told him not to shoot that little gun no more. Don't shoot it no more. He's like, what that's going to do? We here fighting. We got guns a blazing. You hear what this little gun, this ain't, this ain't effective. This is not going to be effective. So likewise, when the enemy comes against us, comes against us, our, it's not effective if we come in with our fists up. No, we got to come with the power of God behind us. That's how we have to come. Otherwise, we're going to be like the little gun <laughs> against the machine guns being shot. Amen. So make sure that you are suited up properly, that you are ready, that you come armed and ready with the power of God. And again, what the scripture is talking about in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, we got to be vigilant. Meaning we got to be, we got to have our eyes open and our eyes and our eyes uh, uh, alert because otherwise he can sneak up on us. He can sneak up on us. So we got to be sober minded. That's one. That's the other thing. Sober minded. So we always got to be in a good state of mind, a great state of mind to where we are uh, able to process the data that's coming at us. So when we know it's the, uh, the enemy, we can definitely respond in such a way that'll be effective to shutting them down. All right. So you better recognize. That's all I got to say. You better recognize, better recognize. So it's my prayer that this message will help you for today, the rest of the weekend, as the enemy's busy doing his thing, but God is bigger. God is greater. Amen. Yes, he is. He's greater. Greater is he that is in me, that is in you, than he that is in the world. Yeah, but we got to recognize that. We got to be able to recognize that and stand on that. Amen. All right, y'all. Love y'all. Good night. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I encourage you, go ahead and finish reading Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Again, that hooks us up on the entire armor of God. All right. Talk to y'all later. If y'all got questions about what was taught, you can um, message me in the, you know, in the message or you know, along here in the comments. Y'all know what to do. Y'all know what to do more than I do. All right. <laughs> Love y'all. Talk to y'all later.